half in the bag. <sighs> well, Jay, it's official. Wisconsin has locked down again. <sighs> Fuck, man. This is the third time we've sheltered in place, reopened, and then sheltered in place again. I'm starting to think no one has any idea what they're doing. What? Oh, fuck it. I say we just all get coronavirus and get it over with. We'll probably lose Betty White, but who cares? She wore blackface! And with California closing down again, who will make all these terrible movies that we endlessly complain about? Ah, Jay, do you remember the good old days when there was a new Marvel or Star Wars movie released every five days or so? Now we have to wait till 2025 to see Black Widow in the movie theaters when they reopen. If they reopen. Well, they did reopen last week, and I actually did go to see a movie. I had to download a Chinese app in order to download a different Russian app that linked to my bank account in order to buy a ticket from something called Movie Ticket Magic. It was very sketchy. <laughs> right. Then when you walk into the theater, they take your temperature and make you stand in a plexiglass box where a teenager in a hazmat suit scans your phone with some weird device. The device has all sorts of weird radiation stickers all over it. it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Well, I tried to buy concessions at the movie theater. Oh my God, I couldn't wait in line because of social distancing, so I had to download a North Korean app called Popcorn Magic in order to buy concessions. I placed my order on my cellular phone and a drone emerged from the ceiling to bring me my popcorn and soda. After it had delivered my popcorn and soda, it disinfected the area with some kind of antiseptic mist. Most of it got in my food and in my eyes. After the drone flew away, it lost control and crashed into an elderly couple, setting them afire. They screamed and screamed and yelled aloud, Help! We're on fire! A teenager rushed over with a fire extinguisher and tried to spray them. But because of social distancing, the fire extinguisher couldn't reach them. So he did the only thing he could. Watch them burn. Well, in my theater, they only sold five seats out of a hundred because of social distancing. But it's okay because the ticket was discounted to $1.50. It's a business model that's sure to last. Well, I was the only one in my theater, Jay. But right before I went to see the movie, I had read an article that said coronavirus can get into your eyes and into your ears. So while I was at the movie, I wore earplugs, eye patches over both eyes, and a facial mask. Hmm. So, how'd you even see the movie? Or eat your concessions? What? Jesus Christ. What'd you say about Jeff Sessions? I said, how'd you see the movie or eat your concessions? Oh, I didn't do either. The movie was The Matrix, so I've seen it before. Yeah, you know, I saw that The Matrix was in the top box office for the weekend, along with Back to the Future 3, a bunch of Harry Potter movies. Footloose, Mean Girls, Austin Powers. E.T., Grease, The Avengers. They all grossed right around $1,000 each. There are literally no new movies out for theaters to show, other than Followed. All I know is that the top grossing film released in 2020 was Bad Boys for Life. And the second top grossing film was 1917, a movie that didn't even come out this year. I can't wait for the Oscars. Here's the list of the nominees. You know, Jay, I've been watching a lot of streaming movies lately. Would you like to talk about, say, two? that we've both seen? <laughs> Mike, I can honestly say I've never worn blackface. What? 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 Number, please. Hello? Accessories? Large object holding over my hand. The Vast of Night. 
In light of this new evidence, CDC recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public settings where other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain, i.e. grocery stores, pharmacies, especially in areas of significant community-based transmission. Practice good hygiene. Avoid social gatherings in groups of more than 10 people. Wash your hands, especially after touching your genitals or other frequently used items or surfaces. Avoid touching your face, your partner's face, your grandma's face, or your grandma's vagina. So, The Vast of Night. A um, uh, movie that's been out quite a while now. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, in our, uh, it's in our wheelhouse. Uh, our love of science fiction, low-budget movies. Uh, Both in, of the movies we're talking about are low-budget. We, <laughs> we should point that <laughs> yes. out. One more skillfully made than the other. I, I, we all know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Aqua Slash. Of course, of course. Uh, but yeah, Vast of Night. Um, uh, wow, what a film. What a film. I watched it on my television. <laughs> this is, I guess it's kind of been like a word of mouth movie where people started say, like, have you seen Vast of Night? Have you watched Vast of Night? Yeah. I think it's probably a little divisive because if you're just looking at it from a story perspective, not much happens. Um, but it's the way the movie is made. It's a little, a little, um, it's a little hard for an average viewer to slide into this movie. It doesn't start off showy. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at me, I'm a movie. Arlo's under the stands figuring it out. Because last time it happened, it was a squirrel that had bitten through a wire, but the wire was still in the squirrel's mouth of the skeleton. So it just locks all the electric, because we can't roll it, it's slicker. It starts off in, in these in these really long one-take shots and, um, which are show offy if you're paying attention to the filmmaking, but they're not like draw like bringing attention to themselves. Right. It just kind of happens naturally as characters talk a lot. Well, I guess we'll have little speakers and microphones instead. And on one side, you'll have the dial, and on the back, the back will be a little putt screen, so like a miniature television screen. And it's it's neat. It's not done in the traditional setup, uh, like how a, how you how you think a movie would be constructed. You know, you know, all the shots he pulls up and stops his car and gets out, and they call him. He, he answers the phone at the radio station. We have establishing shots of the basketball game. It just the the cameras are sort of flowing behind him, and he's just chatting with people. And there's things. It's like it's Martin Scorsese, the Goodfellas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one take shot kind of thing. It's not one take. There's breaks, of course, but there's like little details going on. The kid with the trombone he, or trumpet, he drops it. Yeah. And they're all, uh, why are you going right down? And goes under under the bleachers. There's an electrical problem. Mm -hmm. Everyone's they got him confused with another person. It's, and... uh, it's, it's building its world. It's a little small town. Yeah. Everybody knows each other. We don't have to be told too much information. We're just kind of thrown in. And so it's a little off-putting at first because you're just like, ah, ah, the movie's not acting like a movie it normally <laughs> does. This is weird. I can't understand what anybody's saying and ah, what's going on. And they start to explain like that whole opening. They're, they're talking about the tape recorder and they're just establishing all the characters without uh, a bunch of like blanket exposition. Right. You, you get to know the characters just based on the way they interact with each other, especially the main guy and the main girl. Right. Uh, yeah, Everett and Faye. Faye is the, uh, Everett's the guy who works at the radio station. And then Faye is like, I don't know, kid in high school. And she's interested in the, the tech stuff, the radio. She has her, her own tape recorder, which is a novelty in 1950-something. Yeah. Um, and she works at the, uh, the phone. Yes, she's a switchboard operator, which uh, is one of the most impressive scenes in the movie. Boeing has introduced its new line of very own. Very own and this is this is where because uh, also based on the film, like we said, the story is is whatever. Aliens are invading, but it's the way the story is told. And this is an example of like really building atmosphere and tension without seeing anything. Yeah, uh, is her at this switchboard going back and forth, uh, and it just holds on her. It kind of very very subtly, you know, goes in, comes back wider, and it goes on forever. And it's all just listening. It's her listening. And then later in the movie, we have Everett at the radio station just listening on the phone. We don't see anything. It's all told with just atmosphere and uh, using your imagination and sound. Yeah. I'd be curious to find out how long or how many times that actress 
uh, practice that scene. <laughs> that moving the things around. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is expecting a young actress to know how to work an old timey switchboard like that. I'm sure that required some practice. Practice, practice. They got a 90 year old lady in there. Oh, I used to do this and do this and this and this. Yeah. And I, yeah, she learned it. That's what act. That's their job, actors. You want to be an actor, you got to be good at at remembering lines. You should be an acting teacher. I know. You got to be good at remembering lines, and you can't constantly fuck up. <laughs> that's uh, forty nine ninety five for my class. <laughs> you were entering Paradox Theater. Uh, it starts off with a little play on the Twilight Zone, where it, it oh, shows yeah. like like an old 1950s TV, and it's moving in, and they're basically saying this is an episode of the Twilight Zone in movie form. So don't get your your hopes up too high, you know. We're not making Independence Day. We're not making Independence <laughs> Day. So yeah, it, it it establishes that tone right away with that shot and goes into the TV. But then the tone isn't corny. It's not trying to be like a throwback movie. No, it's, no. It just takes place in the 50s, and yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. But you say corny. Uh, when you think it's a movie about aliens, and you know, uh, uh, but but the 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 word aliens is never spoken. They never say Roswell and uh, flying saucer. None of that's ever come up. And it's just the kid. The kid basically says like Ruskies or you know, is it the commies? And because the flying saucer thing, you know, Roswell was forty-seven, and then it wasn't until like the fifties. The first that, that couple that got abducted, it wasn't in the the mass culture mindset. Flying saucers and abductions. And yeah, yeah. And stuff. not quite yet. Played it nice and straight and simple. But we have lots of long takes. You know, we're talking filmmaking. We're talking techniques. Lots of long takes in the beginning. But then once like things start happening, kind of it, it shifts gears, and it becomes lots of fast cuts, close-ups, and for certain times, uh, the technique changes a lot. Yeah, when which, it needs to. When it needs to, and it keeps you keeps you interested. Yeah, it's not uh, uh, just like endless long takes. It's like, not Last Days by Gus Van Sant. Yes, exactly. It's my well, then favorite there's also, movie to go to even, when I even, talk about long takes. Even when there is a long take, there's like that one shot that I think it starts at the uh, like, like the switchboard or at the, the phone company, Yeah, and then it like goes all across this long oh, yeah, yeah. field and into the uh, the gymnasium, but it's like it's like all of a sudden it turns into a Sam Raimi movie, and it's yeah. it's impressive. It's a little show offy, but it's also just establishing how close all these things are to each other. They're like, hey, we're in a small town. Yeah, we had a collaborator who's one of our executive producers who literally, uh, for yes, real, uh, laid himself out on a go kart that we sourced from an 18 year old farm boy locally there in Whitney, Texas. And then it was, and then it was off to the races at 40 miles an hour. And then it was other handoffs. And yeah, and then it was, you know, build these lights in a way that whenever you pass underneath them, you don't have a shadow, you know, of this go-kart and this camera system. But then it'll also slow down. They go to an elderly woman's house at one point and it's just, just holds on her. That's another one where it feels like it's probably 10 minutes of her explaining the story. I, I love shots like that or scenes like that when when someone is telling like a really long emotional story and they're not playing for cutaways mm -hmm. all the whole time and then you just you're just sitting there just like kind of engrossed in the story like like you're there listening to it yourself and you're not and then you finally see the reaction later and that night in the middle of the night he walked out the front door of this house and vanished how? He was taken up from this earth. Yeah, that sequence reminded me of the uh, the Jaws, the Indianapolis uh, speech that Quint does in Jaws. I think that does cut to their reactions a little bit, but a lot of it is just going in on Robert Shaw's face. And there are, uh, should we go into spoilers? Um. Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 a movie that isn't isn't really like twists and turns constantly. It's interesting, but um, uh, it does have a conclusion, and we'll talk about that and skip past this time code to get to our Aqua Splash <laughs> review, uh, which is a whole different kind of low budget movie. Equally light on story, though. 
equally light on story. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, slightly less impressive performances, but we're going to get into Dr. <laughs> Splash. So if you really want to just enjoy Vast of Night uh, as, as a fresh view, we, we probably give it our, I give it my recommendation. Oh, absolutely. Um, so go ahead and watch it. Uh, well, I was just going to talk about a, a spaceship does show up at the end. And as far as the resourcefulness of the filmmaking, where it's it's an impressive effect, the ship itself is. You don't like the ship. Oh no, it's, I'm fine with that. Okay, um, I'm surprised. Yeah, no, no, no. I was fine with that because it, it's been building up so slowly throughout the movie. I would be disappointed if they showed it and it was like a shitty CGI. Like it looks like it's probably a miniature or something. Oh, no. Like it looks impressive and incorporated into its environment way better than you know, 100, 200 million dollar movies. Yeah. And it's only shown very briefly. So it's like, okay, they dumped the appropriate amount of money into getting that shot right. Yeah. So it feels as kind of real and believable as the rest of the movie did. Well, that's, that's the, uh, the, the, the to be or not to be moment at the end. It's the fork in the road. Yeah. And I'm sure there's people on both sides of the fence that say they shouldn't have shown it. They should have just like like looked up and maybe saw some lights and then they were gone. Oh, oh did they did they get killed by the zodiac? <laughs> I mean, with his you know he showed up. What happened to him? Did they just uh, something mysterious happen? Did they cross into to a, a fucking ley line and, and go into another dimension? Did aliens beam him up? Who knows? Or you do the artsy non-ending where they go to a field and they're walking out and the music swells and then you just cut to black. So like the ending of Sopranos, right? Doesn't it just cut to black? And you're like, what happened? Tony Soprano got shot in the head. You don't know that. Yeah. Well, we don't know what it's like to be shot in the head and die. I wish. Anyways, uh, so yeah, ambiguous or non-ambiguous, I, for one, really liked the UFO ending because you spend this whole time, you know, building it up. And they're, they're skirting around aliens. And then it's like, oh my gosh. It's real, and then they get abducted. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, oh, you know, it's sad. You like your characters. Yeah. It's, it's something really bad happened to and, them. And all they're doing is just trying to figure out what the fuck is happening. Yeah, it's a very simple story. I don't know who produced it. It's an Amazon film, but I don't know if that It was made independently, and then Amazon, Amazon picked it up. Yeah. It. Okay. Um, it played a bunch of film festivals. Like, it went over really well at film yeah, festivals. Yeah. Crowds liked it, much like our second film. Uh, right. Yeah. Same uh, critical darling, they call them. I don't know yeah. if you could call the, uh, the director's basement a film festival. <laughs> well, the director's mom's basement. Okay. Okay. Somebody else put on the film festival, not the director. It's the director's mom. Okay. So. <laughs> yes. So that makes it legit. There's a red carpet, but it's just because the mom has a drinking problem and she spills wine a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. He asked for jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and the jokes just like they, they just appear and most times they're bad. They've come here before. They've liked this place. They always have. But yeah, Vast of Night. That's worth a watch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's uh, Especially in these times. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you're just where everyone's just looking for entertaining things to watch. It's a movie that it's a you, you get sucked into the atmosphere and you just kinda let it wash over you. It's it's really really sad um uh, uh, uh it's becoming a desert an entertainment desert while going on streaming like netflix and uh, uh amazon and i saw a trailer for baby frankenstein <laughs> uh, and, and it's just like that's one of the more recent and it's just i like, want to watch baby frankenstein watch the trailer for it we'll, we'll show a clip here um oh god it, it looks like it was made in 2004 <laughs> There's a kid with just makeup on and he's just running around in the woods. Is it a baby Frankenstein? It's a baby Frankenstein. Not, not like infant Frankenstein, but more like, I don't know, 10, 8-year-old Frankenstein. Okay. That doesn't have the same ring as a title no, goes. But they show it. The, the cover, of course, looks like a terrible like Asylum or Red Box cover. And it's just like a baby Frankenstein with a rattle. Well, that's the thing to point out. Yeah. Because you hear like, oh, super low budget 
you know, alien invasion movie or something. And I just picture all the time, like a the production value of something like a baby Frankenstein. Like there's so many of those type of movies on, especially on like Amazon prime where they all, yeah, they all look like they were shot. They're like came out last year, but they all look like they were shot on, you know, a camera from 15 years ago. They just look like trash. And then you get something like Vast of Night, which has a low budget, but is incredibly resourceful and knows uh, exactly where to put all of its elements. Yeah, it looks it looks good. It looks a little over post produced. They they added way. like a, a film grain effect, which which a lot of lower budget movies do, but they usually do it very subtle, where you don't even really notice it. Yeah. It's just there to give the image some texture. They overdid it just enough in this where I, I, I thought it worked as far as like an old timey movie goes and they kind of uh, decreased the contrast a bit. It looks slightly, you know, less contrasty than most movies, yeah. which I liked because you look at bigger movies now and they crank up that contrast. They crush the black so much and everything's like oversaturated and the blacks are super black. And I don't like that. I like it a little more subtle. So I like the look of this movie a lot. It's a good thing it, it wasn't a big like summer movie season. Something like Vast of Night. Just vanished, Would've yeah. Would have gotten buried. That's the advantage of uh, streaming services and especially releasing something like that direct to Amazon. Yeah. Is a, a movie like that or like uh, uh, even like The Irishman, even though that's made by Martin Scorsese. If that were released in theaters and didn't go to Netflix, it would have flopped. With with today's like audiences and what is successful at the box office, Irishman would have just been like a gigantic flop. Yeah. But the people that are a little more patient, they stay at home and they watch a three and a half hour Martin Scorsese movie and they can soak it in. The elderly would have liked Irishman at the theater. That would have been a big hit for them. They wouldn't have made it to the end of the movie then. Oh. <laughs> the last thing they would have seen is a digitally de-aged Joe Pesci before they, they went up to the pearly gates. Mm -hmm. There's something in the sky. All right, everyone, listen up. The Grad Committee have worked hard to make this a weekend to die for. Aqua Slash is thought to spread mainly through close contact from person to person. Some people without symptoms may be able to spread Aqua Slash. We are still learning about how Aqua Slash spreads and the severity of illness it causes. You know, it's weird. When you read the, uh, the, the, the synopsis for Aqua Slash, mm -hmm. all I hear is like the coronavirus shit. Just, I know, it's just, it's everywhere. That's all you hear anybody talking about. I know, it's like... Even when you're just trying to explain the plot of some bad B movie. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. So, speaking, speaking of weird... Yeah. It's what, <laughs> why did we watch Aqua Slash? Uh, well, this one, I, I hadn't even heard of this thing. You're just like, look at the trailer for Aqua Slash. I, I do some deep diving when it comes to looking for films to watch digging into the, the bowels of voodoo, looking for <laughs> anything to watch that uh, might be interesting. And then I saw this trailer for Aqua, Aqua Slash. First thing we gotta point out is that the title is fucking terrible and hard to say. Yes. I had to look it up, because obviously Aqua Slash, you know, it's a play, you just, in your brain, you know that it's Aqua Splash. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I didn't know what that was, I looked it up, I found like a pool company called Aqua Splash. So I guess someone knows what it is, and they're doing a, a clever play on that. But yeah, see, I, during the film, I was hoping for uh, like a, a clever, that was the name of the, the water park. Aqua Splash, yeah. And then like um, S-P-L-A-S-H, S-L-A-S-H, right? Yeah. So it's just the one letter mm -hmm. where the, like the P breaks. It and falls it, off yeah, and like, it says Aqua Splash. Like Motel Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, the O burns out of Motel Hello, which becomes Motel Hell. Uh, well, okay, so the premise, you know, so it's like watching this, hey, 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 uh, uh, annoying teenagers are going down water slides, and then they ching, they, yes. they show blades go through, and yeah, and it, 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 
it's like, ooh, yeah. I'm in, I'll watch it. Yeah. Um, but then, you, you know, you got to watch that trailer. And the trailer was deceptive for Aqua Slash. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it, it, it offered exactly what you get in the movie because the movie has one idea. <laughs> which is these cross blades going through uh, a water slide. Yeah. That's the one idea the movie has. So what's wrong with the movie? Why is the movie bad? Because it delivers on its promise of, uh, plus, oh, another very important thing to note, the movie is 71 minutes yeah. long. It's yes. barely a feature film. Well, that's, that's I want to give the movie some credit because, uh, I mean, it is bad. It's not quite best of the worst bad. It's just sort of generally bad, but they know that they only have one idea, so they just said, let's have a first act and a third act, and then get the fuck out. This movie has no second act. It sets up of all, all of our characters, because you hear that title, and it sounds like, oh, it's going to be a slasher movie set in an amusement park, or in a water slide park. So I was expecting, like, a slasher movie, and it really isn't. It's a bunch of boring, interchangeable crackers for the first 45 minutes. But then the final act of the movie is they keep finding ways to have people... I was like, oh, there's not lots of different types of killings, like a Friday the 13th. It's just this one water slide, and they just keep finding ways to make more people go down that water slide. Uh, and that's where it started to become entertaining to me. <laughs> this... Uh, we have... We have um... We have radar for for what's American and what's not. And, and my <laughs> this is not American radar went off. And and oh, because painfully obvious later that it's Canadian because they give up <laughs> trying to hide their accents. I'm just trying to be a... to be a dad. Yeah, not happening. Why are you here anyway? What's your name? Get off the platform! Don't go down. They fuck you, dude. What? This is not American. I can just tell. Even though it's, it takes place in Connecticut, they have Connecticut license plates on the cars, mm. and I'm just like, no, 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 no. Looked it up, Canadian, Canadian. Whether they shot it there, or if they just crossed over. Like The Pit? Like the Remember pit, that? Yeah. That was a Canadian movie that was shot in Wisconsin, the middle of nowhere, yeah. Wisconsin. They went, they went around the Niagara Falls, and they got down in Connecticut, filmed their movie, and ran back up. <laughs> Before anybody noticed. Before anybody noticed. They shot it on a weekend. My guess is they had access to this water park that was defunct. Sure. Um, well, I don't know if it is, because there's a part where the the cheating husband character, uh, someone, we have the point of view of the killer, and they have a gun pointed at him, and that entire time he's like pleading not to shoot him, you can see people going up the water slide behind him. Oh. And so, like, the, the gun goes off. Someone would have noticed that, but nobody apparently did in the film. So okay. I wonder if that, that was shot while the park was actually open. Yeah, maybe, maybe they closed for a couple of days. Or yeah. Who, who cares? I think this movie, obviously it knew it had a one-trick gimmick, and they, they, they did all the the right things to kind of create a little plot line and then lots of lots of little drama going on yeah, between the characters and then try to um, justify the logic of having many people get killed on a water slide <laughs> without anybody figuring out how to stop it and we'll talk about those real quick but yeah. I, I just think the execution was so so poor it reminded me of like like haunted ween or one of those like like 80s best of the worst movies that, that are just like bafflingly bad. What was the movie where death throws the guy off the roof? Or oh, Spookies. Spookies, yeah. That's, you... It's funny that you say that because that's exactly what I wanted to mention is if this movie was made in 1987 mm -hmm. and was shot on 16 millimeter, it would be getting a beautiful Blu-ray release from mm -hmm. Vinegar Syndrome right now. Yeah. It feels like that without intentionally trying to do that. Yes. Without being intentionally retro or we're making an 80s movie, it was, it was that 80s, mid-80s incompetence. Yes. <laughs> just, just blindly done without without irony mm -hmm. which kind of kind of has its own charm if you're into that kind of stuff i know you're less so than me but i've seen or i've started to try and watch a number of movies on amazon prime 
like I was talking earlier about stuff that is just like shot on cheap, like digital cameras and they look like garbage. And they're all trying to do the like 80s throwback. There's so many like 80s style slasher movies and they're all awful. Yeah. And they're all really like tongue in cheek. Uh, they feel like trauma movies or yeah, something. Yeah. And this was so sincere. It was bad, but there was still something kind of charming about it to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if, oh God, it becomes, you start to go cross-eyed. If, if they were trying to make a legitimate, unintentionally bad 80s movie without being ironic about it and without... Like self-conscious, but not, or self-aware, but not trying to let the audience know it's self-aware? Yeah, then they succeeded. <laughs> like, they, they wanted to make a modern day best of the worst movie. Okay, so, so, so the premise is teenagers have just graduated high school. It's tradition in this small town to go to this water park and a, just do cocaine and ecstasy and heroin and whatever goes. Everyone's going crazy doing drugs. Apparently They're, there's injuries there every year that it happens. There's some line about that. Every fucking year, Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, doctor. Okay, can you just get them out of here, please? Well, it was a, a couple goes up to the top of the water slide, and they're having sex. Mm -hmm. And somebody cuts the guy in half, and he, his torso falls on the ground. And that has nothing to do. I, yeah, that, with, that doesn't, especially when you get the reveal of who the killer is at the end. It's like, what did any of that opening have to do with anything? Well, the only thing that had to do was to set up the red herring, which is the old guy. I'm Conrad Carter. I'll make everything work here. All by yourself? How old are you, man? You want to find out, kid? It's funny, they show him in 1988, and he's like like a 20-year-old guy, like the, you know, and then it cuts to now, and he's like 78. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like Obi-Wan Kenobi syndrome. Um, and he's like, I used to work here, and all these kids, and that. So he's a red herring to make you think he was the one who committed the murder. He's that character's one. in every slasher movie. Yes, yeah. so it's like, okay, well, it's not him. Right. I ruled him out right away. That whole scene in the beginning was pointless. I don't know who killed those young lovers on top of the water slide. It wasn't the old man. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. It's just a misled. So then we have, we've got to establish some characters. We have, we have the band oh, that's going to play some 80s songs. They licensed an actual 80s song. Licensed I was surprised by that. And sung it very well. Oh, my God. I wear my sunglasses at night. hire an actor who could sing too so we don't have to dub the vocals over the, the studio track but it'd be cheaper if we just hired someone that couldn't act or sing oh, let's do that he was a fine actor he was fine the 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 woman that runs the water park with her husband yeah she was pretty good go to hell what come on what's your problem <laughs> fuck you paul well that that, that seemed like at first, I thought she was one of the teenagers. Yeah, she doesn't look too much older. No, and then they show her walking, right? And and she's in like a bikini, and, and I was like, well, what's the problem? And they're like, she's a MILF that that fucks teenage guys. Once One teenage guy every... I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, she's class of 1992. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that would make her like 48 years old. I heard she chooses one guy every year. A guy? To do what? To fuck. <laughs> Have sex, you idiot. Uh, but I thought she was like an old B-movie, Scream Queen kind of thing. That's who you cast in that role. Exactly, and yeah. I think they maybe they tried, but I looked and, you know, uh, oh, one character on CSI, and uh, kind of been in some real things. Yeah. But, who? <laughs> uh, and then, um... <laughs> And then, uh, okay, so then you have the little, the, the little the rock and roll guy, and he's in love with a girl who's dating the jock. Everybody's cheating on everybody in and the then, opening half of this movie. So there's some, some fucking... Both of the owners of the water park, it's a husband and wife, he's cheating on her. She apparently cheats on him with a different kid every summer. Yeah. So just everybody's cheating on everybody. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Get out of here! I'm so sorry, dude. The dad of the rock and roll guy, our lead character, I don't remember his name, and he's like, you're the lobster scene? The eyes are 
Oh, don't be grossed out. I don't believe in waste. And so there's like some kind of little plot about who's going to control the water park. And, and it's just, you know, it's just filler. Um, the premise is to get kids into a slide so that they could get cut. <laughs> it's one after the other. And uh, so there's some, some rubber torsos that <laughs> roll down the slide. It's pretty great. Those last 20 minutes, the, the fact that they keep coming up with convoluted ways to have kids just keep going down those slides. Conrad, can we send the next ones down? So, it's basically a case where everybody has to be as stupid as possible for the events of the movie to happen. Right. Yeah. Because that is something we say a lot on Best of the Worst. Where it's like, why are they doing this? Oh, because the movie needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we need a, an abbreviation or some sort of some sort of phrase or, or word for that. Aqua Slash? <laughs> I'll just call it, but then you have to say Aqua Slash over and over, yeah, and I never want to really say that again. Say aqua Slash, Aqua Slash, Aqua Slash. Conrad, can we send the next ones in? Well, it's funny you mentioned too, the, you know, something's off, is this not shot in America? Yeah. It turns out it's Canadian. But then there's weird stuff that reminded me of some of the bizarre, like, 80s Italian movies. Like, there's the little kid that doesn't really tie in with the rest of the story. Mom, it hurts. Here, cover it up. Where he's, like, on the beach and he has a cut foot that's not really explained. But he's sitting on the beach and he just finds an old, like, cassette tape Walkman Buried yes. just under the surface, and the kid seems like dumb. Mom, look! And he has nothing to do with anything, but then there's like a mid credit uh, stinger. Did you even see that part? No. And it's like, what is this supposed to mean? Mm, sequel bait. Sequel bait, because the, the real killer was traumatized as a kid, so maybe this one's traumatized yeah, as a what kid. It is. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the real killer is. Yeah, the real killer is the lady. But if that's the case, put that in the movie not as a credit stinger because you've spent so much time building up this dumb kid. Mm, spent a little bit. Why does he, he have a, Yeah, yeah, he has nothing to do with anything. And then his mom falls in the bloody water. Just all this random shit happens. Yeah, so many. <laughs> <laughs> just weird dialogue, weird choices. It's hard to describe the weirdness. I like, think the director is, well, I guess if he's from Canada, because I want to say his name sounded French, but yeah. he could be French-Canadian, right. so yeah. Yeah, I guess if, if maybe he speaks no English, right? <laughs> he just speaks French, and he's trying to direct this movie. And it has trying, that feel of, yeah, like we've seen so many best of the worst movies that are clearly shot by someone that's not American, trying to make an American movie. Your, your Troll 2 effect. Yes. Where they're trying to, like... This, this is how American teenagers party, right? Because uh, that lobster scene. <laughs> I, I can't get over the lobster scene. I'm in the middle of dinner. Oh, sure. Okay. Later. I've got a 35-year-old lobster waiting for me. Look who eats a lobster, picks it up, and eats it with their hands. You know, yeah. was this supposed to be funny? Was it supposed to just say that this guy is just like, just this evil rich monster that just consumes and doesn't care what he looks like or his manners? I don't know, I, I'm just, it just comes off as bizarre. So many little moments in there. Like there's that scene where Chad is, he's in like a hot tub and then the girl comes running trying to find the band leader guy. Um, I'm happy you're still here. Where's Josh? Thought it was with you. And he comes out and he puts a towel on and they sit down on the bed. And she's like, where's, you know, Bobby, you know? Oh yeah. And then, and then he's like, I don't know. And then Bobby, whatever his name is, comes, comes in and he's like, what's going on? And, uh, what happened with your dad? What the fuck is he doing here? Like he wants something and I don't know what or why. I don't know. Uh, here's looking for you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Come on, let's go for a walk. And I'm like, oh, was that wasn't that set up for like 
she might be with this guy now. Like, yeah. Why is he in a towel? Like, uh, what? Why? Um, so, so many weird things. It's a high doggy scene. How much is it? It'll be eighteen dollars. Go, keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. This is very brief and it has nothing to do with anything. Why are we seeing no. it? No, Jay. He was getting roses. And we needed to see him go to the store to buy those roses. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. That was another weird part is we have the owner. There's the, the female and male owners of the water park. The male owner starts to go down the water slide. He's oblivious to the fact that there's blades in it. Yes. But then we for cut For no to reason, he stops himself. For no reason, yeah, he starts going down it. And then we cut to him, like, trying to stop himself. Like, he knows, but then he, he didn't. But then he just does. How did he know? Don't let go! Don't let go! What the fuck's going on? I think they realized they had to kill him off in order to make the heroine's plot work. Then why not just kill him off? Why not have him just go down and get sliced? Why does he suddenly stop himself? I think we had to make our hero, the the singer in the band, uh, try to do something heroic. Oh, sure, because he hasn't done much else. No, so, yeah. he didn't do anything. He tried to heroically climb up the slide to maybe save people. Gotcha. Tell your dad to go fuck himself. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah. No! <laughs> And so our girl, our 49-year-old, 30-year-old, yeah. won the day because when she was a little girl, her father got cut or died in a water park accident. Yes. They show his head floating underwater and she's like, Daddy, Daddy. So she was traumatized and she carried that trauma with her until she was 48 and then said, I'm going to... For, day, for years and years and years and years and years and years and years have sex with random teenage boys at the water park until this random year I decide is the year I will put swords through a water slide. Why does she even decide to work at the water park? Because someday she wants to put swords through one of the slides? She coincidentally married a guy who owned that water park. It's a complete coincidence, huh? It's all... <laughs> A very messy, illogical, confusing, pointless, <laughs> nonsensical My, setup to have people go down a water slide and get cut in half by swords. That's why it's not pointless. That is the point. Literally. It's literally the point. Do you remember the, 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 the half-assed like, dance-off? You're misremembering it, Jay. Oh. We've been practicing our moves. You want to see what you've been missing? Yeah, show us what you can do. It's not a dance competition. It's their moves when they go down the slide. Is that what that's supposed to be? See, I thought that was supposed to be a dance. No, no, no. It's, it's their moves when they're going down the slide in the big competition. Yeah, okay, guys, that's good, but just please keep it for the slides, okay? So, Jay, would you recommend uh, Aqua Slash? I'm almost tempted to. The first 45 minutes, how oh, it's 70 minutes, right? It's 71 minutes. Yeah. The last like 20 minutes, I I was genuinely entertained, but you have to sit through a lot. Some of it's like so awkward and weird, it's kind of interesting, but it's also just a lot of boring. <laughs> Would a virgin do this? Hello? So I don't know if you're feeling adventurous and you got nothing else to watch, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of someone that watches a lot of B movies and watches a lot of, like I mentioned, like the Amazon Prime shit that is all worthless. Yeah. Okay. Th this sort of is interesting in that world. Your, your bar has been lowered. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, it is. It is a, a good case study in a train wreck. We've been seeing each other once a week for three fucking months, you asshole. Just, just, you know what, come here, have a shot. You're just tripping way too hard. Because we always talk about like a concept, like mm -hmm. you get this great concept and how do you make it work? Yeah. And, and so if you're, if you're interested in that sort of perspective, because I'm looking at it like, yeah, we've got, thank God it was only 71 minutes. We got 71 minutes to fill until we get to our ending. It's 35 years this weekend. 35 years since what? The murders. Fuck that, we just want to slide. And that's an, another interesting thing to point out real quick, is when the killings start happening, when they start hitting, hitting the psh, psh, 
mm -hmm. uh, the blades. The score ends, and they have that like monotone ringing Just sound. Just like droning, yeah. Yeah, it's like that the Saving Private Ryan scene when all the sound goes out mm. and it's just like, oh, you know, all, where it's like in a real movie, it would be like, oh, this is, this is the part where we stop and, yeah. and we're shocked because they pull all the sound out. It's, it's a way to like intensify mm -hmm. what's going on. And, sure. and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm just going, I, I want to laugh that people are being cut because this, I'm not taking this movie serious. See, the fact that they made that decision is what made me laugh. The stuff like that, where they're taking this dumb concept so seriously and trying to execute it seriously, like that's where the humor came in for me. It's it's a it's a ma matter of interpretation, and it's a matter of like what what would you do? Yeah, it's it's just all these different decisions. Many are poor decisions, but it's it's interesting. It's, it's how do you mold this pile of clay into something? You've got a premise, you've got a location, you've got some random characters. How do you put these pieces around differently to make something that's actually workable? Yeah. Um, so it's fun in, in that regard where you watch it and you kind of go like, ooh, that was bad. Oh, that kind of worked. Um, they could have done this. They could, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I would say if, for 71 minutes, don't waste your fucking <laughs> time. <laughs> but you say yes. I, I say kind of. Kind of, yeah. So odd. What yeah. an odd movie. It's very odd. I never want to see it again in my whole life. So how long do we have to stay in the VCR repair shop anyway? I don't know. I guess until there's a vaccine. Or they say it's okay to go back out to the bars again. Then we get coronavirus. We all panic. Rethink our two option only strategy. And then I'll go back inside again. Oh, Brian Singer is trending again. Oh my God. Is he finally getting charged with something? No. Hollywood is so desperate for new content that they're finally letting him direct the Newsies reboot that he's always wanted to make for some reason. <sighs> so anybody can get canceled for something they did 15 years ago, but Brian Singer doesn't get canceled for doing 15 year olds. There it is. <laughs>